Hello and welcome today, guys, for a Spyglass video recap on the day. Today is 3 7 2024, and today was a rather fast day uh, for us over here at Spyglass, guys. Took multiple trades today, not a whole lot of trades today. I had a lot of stocks on my sort of watch list today. Uh, I think about like eight, uh, all ranging from, uh, if I could just go back and remember the drop down, I believe AMD, Amazon, DI, Google, Goldman Sachs, Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, I believe we're all on the watch today just in terms of stock ideas that we were potentially uh, looking for to play. In terms of the indices, there was only really two that I personally was going after today. I did decide that today was definitely not a good day to play SPY and was more of a better day to play tech and even IWM, and I'm going to talk about those in today's recap. Uh, but without further ado, guys, there's also something else I want to cover in today's recap as well, too, in terms of just an overall state of the stock market. I want to talk a little bit about a theory that's a little bit off of Delta and Gamma situation a little bit, maybe just anticipating something for the future. Um, but without further ado, guys, let's kind of get in the recap as quickly as we possibly can. So my personal trades on the day, uh, might as well start here with Meta. This was one of the stocks that I was hunting on the day, or as I like to say, it's on the hunt, right? This is on the watch list that we were looking for uh, just to kind of see any sort of interesting activity. And as you guys can see here from opening bell, very positive Delta, very positive uh, game as well too, targeting this uh, 510 and this also 500 area as well too. However, from watching it at opening bell, at the moment they started doing some call buying in this area and a little bit extra over here in this area, I did end up going long and grabbing this little dip pull back over here on, on Meta and catching a nice move up. Unfortunately, though once we hit that 510 gamma i was sort of saying all right guys we're at the gamma it's now time to get out unfortunately that was not the sort of best move forward but it's a good practical move because remember guys gamma is very sort of unpredictable when it comes to direction in this game, right? Sometimes you can get these pins, these unwinds. Sometimes you can get squeezes if you're really lucky. And today, Meta definitely went and did a gamma squeeze, guys. Because remember, gamma squeezes are things that are just kind of very... In terms of probability, you know that structure is in support of it, right? So gamma's to the upside, delta's to the upside. So it's like, in terms of a positive gamma, positive delta environment, you can have gamma squeezes. Same thing with the negative gamma, negative gamma environment, negative delta. You can also have gamma squeezes, but to the downside, right? So for something like Meta today, you know, as you guys can see, once it got to this 510, it didn't really necessarily start breaking out until here, right? Until they started actually buying really big heavy calls and really big heavy calls again over here as well too, right? And that's what sort of, will lead to these massive gamma squeezes, guys, is when the delta and the gamma are both on the same side, and then massive calls, usually tied to sweep in on the short-term uh, expirational contracts, that's what can go and sort of cause these squeezes, getting us all the way to 520, and then seeing a really interesting sort of reversion right back down to this sort of main gamma on the day. So that was play number one. Play number two for myself on the day was QQQ. I also bought in on this nice little fun dip over here, only really because of the, the call buying that really kind of came in on QQQ, uh, right in this area here. I was telling everybody today, I mean, just wow, first of all, look at all these closing bell deltas in this gamma, holy cow. But even if you kind of snap back uh, to the you know earlier part of the day, you'll also see it's pretty much the same thing. All this positive gamma, one of the levels that I was targeting was this 440 to buy. Uh, however, you know, I look at something like this and I'm just like, how can you not be buying something like this, especially on QQQ? At least as it's closer to that center, 440 is probably your best way to target it. But once I started seeing that there was some nice, decent call buying, put selling happening in this area specifically, decided to pull the trigger, did not get out until over uh, over here in this area over here. So I really let those winners run on QQQ, and that was very nice. Third trade of the day, this one was kind of just right out of opening bell. This one was kind of an interesting uh, shocker a little bit. IWM, let's talk about this for a second. Now, I don't have a lot of experience trading IWM. I think we had like a little bit of a data issue today from our, uh, not our options providers, but our uh, sort of dark pool liquidity volume trader guys. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that cool little fun feature about uh, Spyglass guys is we do have dark pool and sort of lit exchange volume that I'll show you here in a second. Um, and it's kind of cool. But anyways, um, IWM, kind of the sort of the big surprise, uh, all this positive delta, positive gamma, at least trying to go for this 207, 210. And this one was rather interesting. I put in pretty much a buy order for some calls right at opening bell, immediately got filled, started seeing some really nice call buying, and it helped IWM move up to about 208. But unfortunately, guys, this one was really unique because it actually kind of turned into a pump and dump. Yes, that is right. They pumped it up and then uh, sort of just dumped it right back down, at least for like the dealer side of things, and just sort of pinned this uh, 207 area all day. And my gosh, let me tell you guys, what a pain in the neck, what a pain in the ass uh, to see something like IWM go and do this rather than just going and supporting some of these flows. And then some call sellers started coming in. This one was kind of interesting. Uh, I definitely feel like uh, I took some personal gamma-based trades off of this, not necessarily delta-related or gamma-related uh, in terms of like trying to buy some options. I actually decided to sell some options and take a, a personal trade on this one. I, I came into the 207 and a half, sold the one days. 
I do think that they'll be fine, as the dealers obviously showed us today that they just would not let this 207 uh, get going and break to the higher prices. It really is absolutely bizarre to see that SPY, QQQ, and pretty much every other industry on the day following its delta, you know, going to those higher gammas and targeting those higher levels. But IWM was the piece of shit that nobody just wanted to touch all day. Really was interesting. So that's why I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to sell some calls in this. I sold about 10 for the 207s and a half, collected about 1000 bucks. So that's a nice little fun personal trade. Um, but that was it. You know, that was pretty much it on the day. I was telling everybody, you're going to want to avoid trading uh, SPY and SPX only because of the gamma situation. These guys had some pretty odd gamma that they were sort of showing us at this 5150. Uh, so I was just kind of like, eh, I think tech was definitely it. Also seeing that, you know, Google was now a buy. That's that's right. There were some members that bought uh, so Google today, as you guys can see here, opening bell, finally started to change its delta situation with its gamma targeting the 134 and by the book, just perfectly being bought back. Uh, and then office, oh, SPY and SPX, I might as well just show you guys that real quick as well too. As you guys can see, SPY was also pretty simple on the day, just beautiful positive delta positive yam, especially from uh, opening bell. Holy cow, this is actually like really easy. Unfortunately, uh, as you guys can see, the top end range of the gamma, 516. And funny enough, once we started getting up there, uh, check this out, massive call selling right here. Ba Boom, right? So they are getting out of their calls at this 516 gamma. Uh, here comes the sort of hardcore aggressive unwind into some really interesting uh, jittery, jittery moves. So now let me talk about the cool little dark pool feature that we have. See these nice little volume uh, spikes right over here and right over here. So we are hooked into uh, block pool trades, or I'm sorry, not block pool, dark pool trades and lit exchange trades, guys. So that's kind of cool. I, I didn't even know we had this feature on, on the website, but check this out. I will go and I will show you. Uh, so if I just bring over uh, ES Futures here, then I just pull up a chart of SPY, kind of on the second-hand side. Uh, you'll see that if I pull up the same sort of chart like on the minute side or something, uh, you will not see the same amount of volume that you'll see like on the dark pool come in. Uh, if I can just kind of go like this with it on my screen. Okay, cool. So you see how kind of in this area, there was like, you know, 268,000 and like maybe 231,000 shares of SPY that were trading in the zone. Well, what's really cool is if you guys go and look at the... Um, the uh, our site, um, we are tapped into the dark pool. So you can actually see that there's actually coming in about up here about 550.75, just about 853,500 shares of SPY trading. That's right. This right here is dark pool. And you can see, remember, so the little window will pop itself out over here. You'll see that number right there. If I just kind of keep it highlighted, yeah, just about 853,000 shares of SPY trading up there. So that was kind of really, really, really cool to see some really big dark pool players and or maybe even lit exchange players. I actually have no idea who it was. Uh, come in and just sort of hit some really big massive shares, massive major unwind, and then obviously uh, now we're off to the races and the after hours here with this whole sort of like major news and NFP for tomorrow. Um, now just sort of talking generally about the stock market, uh, let me pull this little fun thing back over here and actually let me uh, maximize this for you guys on the screen. Whoa, should not be doing that. Uh, here we go and just make it sort of like a normal size. So Let's talk about, okay, maybe not this. Let's talk about the state of the stock market, guys, because in today's video, I also wanted to cover just some sort of, sort of personal beliefs that I am starting to have regarding uh, the futures and regarding SPY and just all these other fun goody goodies, uh, just in terms of are we actually seeing a market top or are we actually ever going to get you know anything that's even remotely to the downside, right? So I will say this right off the bat, right? I'm not trying to take a biased position. I'm not trying to be a bull, I'm not trying to be a bear. I'm trying to play it pretty much however the market is showing me, right? I'm trying to look at every single day and say, okay, is today bullish? Is today bearish? I'm trying to understand and analyze the gamma. I'm trying to understand and analyze the delta, right? We're just playing what's in front of us, right? We're not trying to sit here and take off massive shorts and have all this doom and gloom and, oh no, the market's going for a crash. But this is my observation over the last, I don't know, nine or eight days of trading sessions with ES Futures and SPY and just even tech as well too, right? There has been an interestingly alarming amount of massive gamma sort of induced sell-offs from these zero-day call walls that are consistently showing up in the marketplace uh, on ES Futures and SPY, right? It's almost reminding me just a lot uh, so, so like, look, a little bit of background on Meatswell too. I've been trading for like eight years, obviously four completely unsuccessful, and then more since 2020, just doing a lot better for myself personally. And this reminds me a lot of 2020, a little bit in terms of a gamma perspective, right? When COVID was around in December and January, I remember even for myself, I was getting updates and notifications and, oh my God, really bad news articles and this and that, et cetera. 
regarding COVID. And there was a lot of fear, you know, the America started getting some infections and this and that. But I remember the biggest buzz around the stock market at the time was there's going to be a crash, there's going to be a crash, there's going to be a crash, right? But funny enough, uh, if you actually go back and look what happened until, you know, going into that, I think it was January OPEX or February OPEX. I can't remember exactly. But going into one of the OPEX is kind of like right now, right? There was a lot of positive gamma and a lot of positive delta in the markets still. So the markets still traded higher, right? However, funny enough, about those markets, uh, about, you know, not about those markets, about SPY, SPX, and ES Futures as they were trading higher, there was a massive amount of liquidity trying to come out and exit the marketplace and sell as prices were slamming higher, right? And they were slightly uh, sometimes aggressive, right? Kind of almost exactly like we've been seeing for the last, you know, 10 days or so. So last week, we saw this kind of movement on ES Futures, right? We were getting sort of a little bit of a pullback here. But I started noticing that there was really large sort of at-market sell orders that were starting to happen almost always after hitting and going and trading at a gamma level, right? So as as we hit like the mass sort of gamma wall and the zeros or the, uh, you know, SPY or SPX or whatever, we would see like an unwind, but then there would be massive like crazy, you know, slam market sell orders, right? We saw some here starting on the 26th. Uh, even the next day over here, we saw some more kind of at opening bell a little bit. Nothing super, super crazy on this day though. But then we kind of really started seeing an in, uh, like an increase in volume come in on this day, specifically on the 28th where I was like, okay, I'm starting to kind of, time this top a little bit, you know, because there is a lot of gamma up here at 5100 and even 5150. And obviously somebody's anti, you know, the market going up there. But of course, we continue to squeeze, right? We continue to still sort of defy the odds. But we are still seeing these massive sell orders, you know, such as this, you know, especially like these areas here, very, very, very specific sell orders, even right here, you know, massive, massive sellers towards the end of the month of February, right? Uh, and even just more recently, going and trading at that 5150 gamma, right? After we hit SPX 5150, just a massive sort of unwind, right? Like a massive sell-off uh, occurred, right? And even over here, uh, two days ago, I think on the 5th, when we were actually short the market, there was a massive amount of selling this day. And of course, obviously that got V-shaped and bought back up. And even this day, uh, the 6th, which was yesterday. Once again, we go and we trade at sort of a very large and addictive call wall on SPY. And then bam, massive sellers, more sellers, just massive, massive unwinding of crazy, crazy amounts of liquidity, especially on the futures market, right? And even for today, we saw it uh, towards the end of the bell. We go and we trade at our 516 call wall gamma on, on SPY. And then, you know, the market starts slowly selling a little bit more volume and uh, liquidity starts picking up, but then you start getting those massive sellers coming in again, just trying to slam the bid at market, right? Now, I know that a lot of retail traders are out there looking at this market saying, oh, it's just the jitters because it's news and this and that. And, you know, Wall Street is still bullish as can ever be. And they want all-time highs and they just want to keep going. I get that. But remember, these are really massive sort of sell-induced orders that are happening, even on SPY, if we take a look at SPY here, these are very massive sell sort of orders coming out on the liquidity side of things at significantly higher prices as we're nearing these gamma, these gamma call walls at 5100, 5150, even 5000 is still a very massive gamma level in the marketplace still. And I will say it's been months since I personally and since we personally have seen this kind of sort of reaction from call walls, usually call walls, guys, on the positive gamma side of things, usually have sticky gamma effects where, yes, you can get these unwinds to happen and hit and, you know, come in on the marketplace. It's just a part of, you know, just the stock market in general because in positive gamma, dealers will buy low and sell high. It's just one of those things that occurs. However, when it's this sort of massive in just sheer volume by itself in terms of liquidity, and even the dark pool has been elevated uh, has been relatively elevated as well too for like the last 10 days as well just a lot more active trading you start to kind of wonder a little bit you know you start to kind of put two and two together a little bit and say okay you know is the market gearing up for something because you know one think of it like this right especially when we're looking at something like even as simple as like a minute chart it, it really doesn't make any sense to look at some of these orders that these big players are hitting on futures in terms of trading the sheer massive amount of liquidity, like there's no reason to come in and, you know, dump 17,000 futures like this, you know, majorly just trading at the bid, just slamming the bid, you know, even the previous day, there's no reason to come in and sell 23,000 futures like this all at once and just slam the bid, slam the bid, slam the bid, especially after trading at these uh, sort of predominant gamma levels in the marketplace. So I'm not necessarily worried or concerned, but I, I'm, I'm starting to get suspicious for sure because Wall Street is... Like I said, guys, they are very, very, very smart and very sneaky 
You know, they are not going to make it obvious and they are definitely not going to make it easy. And right now, as you guys can clearly see from the website and even just pretty much every single day still, uh, the market is in this absolutely ridiculous positive gamma, positive delta mode. So dealers are just constantly being forced to buy. So even if somebody comes in and says, all right, I want to sell 10 million shares of SPY, all that market right now, get me out, get me out. A dealer is going to supply the other side of all that liquidity, right? So they're going to, you know, offer the limits and the demand and stuff to execute that trade. But prices are likely just going to V-shape back up. So even on futures, if somebody came in right now and said, all right, I want to sell 100,000 you know, 100, futures all at market, and I want to get out of my, you know, future long positions that I've been holding, or maybe I want to open to short some ES futures, dealers are just going to keep taking the price higher, right? So remember, guys, a lot of times trading is what you can't see. Right? That's why a lot of people, that's why myself personally have turned to things like options and gamma and delta and the dark pool and lit exchanges and, and all of these sort of hidden factors that you can't see with just the bare you know, minimum of what you're being given on these brokerage platforms right? and you know, the bare minimum of what the average retailer is taught. Now, like I'm saying too, I'm not a big bear. I'm not saying, oh, you know, brace for the biggest crash in the world, but I start looking at these kind of trades that are being executed and I start looking at these kind of moves that have happened, you know, just kind of in the last 10 days. And I ask myself, okay, if I was a major massive institution on Wall Street, you know, I'm pretty much controlling this game. I'm rigging this game. I've purchased 30 to 50 million shares of SPY. I'm a massive bull and been getting the market to go up by, you know, influencing the, the options market. And I'm constantly just buying calls and calls. And that's, you know, in turn, just forcing dealers to buy futures and buy SPY. And they're just always providing liquidity and they're just getting the market to go to the moon. What would I start doing if I wanted to start getting out or becoming a bear or just anything of that nature? And it's exactly what we're kind of seeing right now. I know that I can get away with selling 30,000 futures every single day, all at market. And I know I can get away with selling you know, a million shares here, a million shares there, a million shares here, a million shares there, two million here, two million there, et cetera, because the dealers are going to buy it right now and they're going to keep sending prices up because of the gamma situation that's in the marketplace, right? So... Everybody knows, and I feel like this is true, there is going to eventually be a pullback in the stock market. I think it's inevitable at this point. I think prices are very expensive, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense if investors just in general and institutions didn't want to start taking massive profits on the marketplace. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going for a market crash, right? It just means, all right, time to sell because we need to take profits, right? Like the market is extremely expensive. We've been making trillions and billions of dollars. We've added trillions in market cap in just, you know, a very short period of time. We probably need to start selling, right? Just just in terms of profit taking, not like, oh, we want to kill the marketplace or anything. So if I was Wall Street, this is how I would do it. I know that this structure says dealers are just going to keep buying and dealers are just going to keep pushing prices higher and pushing prices higher. Why? Because I'm buying all the call options. So I'm forcing them to do this, right? So in turn, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to keep sitting here and unloading all of my shares, all of my futures, all of the shit I have on the dark pool, just everything I've got. Just keep unloading, keep unloading, keep unloading. Um, because remember guys, in terms of trying to time the top, you're never going to time it, right? No no trader is ever going to sit there, unless if you're like an insider trader or an institution or a market maker, you're never going to be able to time the top of this marketplace, right? A lot of people have been trying to be bears since 4,500 and 4,000 and even all of last year trying to say, oh, we're going to get newer lows. And they've just been getting absolutely you know, decimated. They've been getting absolutely killed, right? Especially on this massive rally that the market has done more recently for the last couple of months here. People are dying, right? People are losing entire accounts. Bears are just completely hibernating, if you want to say that. Um, everybody's just losing billions and billions and billions. I think the total net loss right now for shorts is something like half a trillion or whatever the fuck the news just statistic did. It was from uh, not Zero Hedge, another one of those news people. I, I just read it like a day or two ago where like this is how much shorts have lost as like a collection of whole. Now, I have no idea how accurate that data actually is, but it makes sense to a certain degree, right? This has really been one of the most vicious market rallies of all time where prices are very, very, very expensive right now. I don't want to say the word overbought because I don't believe in overbought or oversold. I just think expensive is a better sort of smarter and more professional word to use. It's just expensive to buy SPY, especially as an investor. $515, no thanks. I don't want to buy it right here. That's a little too pricey for me, right? So when is this pullback going to be, right? When is it going to happen? You know, when is the market going to finally come down? When is, you know, these ridiculously overblown PDE ratios finally going to get respected and the market's going to actually start and go and selling? Nobody knows, right? Um, I'm starting to kind of take some predictions here. I think, right, and this is just kind of a hard guess, I think we're going to possibly start seeing something like that within the next 60 days. I think the next 60, maybe even 30 days, we might start seeing like some really aggressive selling. We still have to get through that March OPEX. 
make no mistake, guys, March OPEC still has a lot of positive gamma, positive delta involved. Not a lot of massive call walls out there or anything on both SPY and SPX, but it's bullish as fuck right now. Excuse my language, but it's like everybody's still on calls. No one is leveraged to the downside. No one is hedged to the downside. No Wall Street player is sitting here saying, wow, I can't wait for the market to crash. Can't wait for the market to crash. No, all of Wall Street right now is pretty much on the same board. Buy calls, buy calls, buy calls, buy calls, buy calls, right? So it's interesting because it's created this like insane amount of leverage to the upside. And I swear to you guys, Wall Street is coming in right now and doing these really massive, just sort of sneaky kind of orders on both dark pool and both actual like exchange, you know, live traded shit. And we're starting to pick up on it, right? Because ES Futures, dude, there's a lot of like big sellers uh, that have been sort of just coming in all at once, you know, for the last 10 days. So look, obviously somebody on Wall Street, whether it's a dealer, a market maker, an institution, obviously somebody really big and really massive has been selling pretty pretty hardcore, right? Somebody big is really getting out and really saying, hey, look, let's start selling or hell, even shorting, right? But remember, in terms of timing it, guys, like anything else, we have to see the negative deltas. Why? Because to actually get prices to go down, at least in my opinion, you need the dealers and the market makers to be on your side, right? You can sit here and say, all right, I'm going to sell. Like, like I said earlier, you can sit here and say, okay, I want to sell 100,000 futures at market right now. Sure, that'll probably drive the market down to a certain extent, but then dealers are just going to likely buy it all back up. Right, so they're gonna squeeze you out of those shorts because their gamma hedge says we gotta just keep buying and their delta is saying, look, we're gonna buy X amount of shares here, X amount of shares here, X amount of shares here. So they're just massive buyers, right? And they're just providing liquidity and they're gonna get their money's worth, right? So they're just gonna keep pushing this market higher, pushing this market higher until eventually every single bear, you know, sort of out there, and, and this is metaphorically speaking, every bear just starts throwing in the towel saying, okay, the market's never gonna go down ever again. And usually when you finally get those sort of like moves where there's just so much sort of, quote, exhaustion, end quote, um, that's when markets really start to kind of change. But remember, guys, this is Wall Street, right? So it's not like they're just going to magically randomly pick one day and say, okay, now this is the day we're just going to go and crash the market. And now we're just going to sell everything we have. No, they're going to systematically get out over time, right? They just have too many shares and too much shit to sell if they are trying to actually sell that it takes them a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, maybe even a month of selling, right? Because they just need time. They just have too many shares that they've accumulated. They have to start dumping it onto somebody. And especially right now with the market going to the highest, didn't Bloomberg just drop like a news article or something the other day saying that Bank of America is now telling their clients, buy every freaking dip that you possibly can. And I'm just like, futures are trading at, you know, 515 spy is, or uh, not 550, uh, 5160. Like, at this point, the run-up has been made. It's like it's like Bitcoin, you know? I, I'm not a big fan of crypto. I don't really know too much about it. So, you know, I'm not one of those connoisseurs or I can't really sit here and debate it. But I, I, I also kind of have a feeling about like Bitcoin and all this other stuff. The, the move, the, the time to get into these things, especially in futures, was when they were 4,000. You know, it was when futures were 4,500 and nobody was really expecting this except for the insiders and institutions in Wall Street. They were trying to go for this kind of move, right? So at, at this point, you're just, chasing into a market that's been so over leveraged for the last four months and has really just gone and defied all odds of impossibilities and stuff out there to just these record highs and these you know massive massive over leveraged amounts i mean nvidia is trading up 920 dollars. i don't know about you but personally for myself i cannot be a buyer on nvidia because that's just way too much money now i know that it can be worth a thousand or two thousand and i'm not here to debate that i'm just saying look things are expensive right um but aside from that, the actualities of what's actually going on in the marketplace, like I said, and as I will reiterate here, uh, the gamma unwinds are getting to be really suspicious. And I mean, really, really, really suspicious. It makes absolutely no sense for whether it's dealers or massive giant players with a massive amount of liquidity to be coming in for the last you know eight days of trading and slamming the bids with these massive giant orders it just makes no sense especially in a bull market especially if this is the most dominant bull market ever why are you panic selling why are you getting out all at once why are you trying to do these massive orders you know what are these orders all about especially on the dark pool and especially on like the actual exchanges themselves what are these orders about right if it's so bullish I mean, wouldn't you be selling at higher prices and just let the buyers, you know, just grab your liquidity, but then so that way you can just, you know, get back in and throw some more liquidity and just continue to move up. So uh, maybe people are starting to get jittery a little bit, uh, but I still think that higher prices are yet to come. I just don't know exactly what this day is going to look like in terms of, okay, now, you know, this is the start of the end. 
I think that it's possibly already getting started here. Um, guys, we've had a great run-up. I mean, think about it like this. We've been pretty much buying SPY. I know ourselves. I know myself personally. I've been trying to buy SPY since like 460, right? I've just only been a massive buyer, massive buyer, massive buyer, massive buyer. And at this point, you're now up, you know, $60 on this ETF. And it's like, dude, at some point in time, you have to start sitting there saying, all right, look, I have to personally sell, even as an investor. Now, like I said, you guys can trade it any way you want. This is just a general heads up caution that I want to give to everybody, hence why this video is so long today. I just wanted to share my ideas with the marketplace. And I've been wrong a million times before in the past, guys. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong about this one too. Maybe it's possibly just a load of nothingness right now. And the market's really destined for 54, 55, 6,000, you know, 7,000 by year end or something crazy like that. Um, I'm just saying, hey, you know, heads up. This is what I'm starting to see. And not it's not only me that's seeing this kind of stuff. There's other traders in the group that are also seeing it too. You know, I mean, think about it, guys. This really has been the greatest bull run ever. And eventually the fun is going to come to an end. Nobody knows exactly when, but that's sort of the tail end risk in bull markets is you can get those sort of massive sell-offs and those massive pullbacks, right? Because that's where all the risk is now. And in bear markets, it's the opposite. In bear markets, you have the risk of these cover rallies, right? So all throughout 2022, what was the massive risk? Oh no, Wall Street is going to cover all their shit and send futures back up 100 points. Now the risk is all, okay, well, when is this massive you know, sell-off going to happen? Everybody knows it's coming right everybody there's no debating that now but all right guys that'll do it for the video today just wanted to kind of share my thoughts with you know gamma and delta and you know just like anything else we're just going to keep trading them right we're just going to keep, keep trading the gamma keep trading the delta just keep looking at this from a day-to-day -day trade I i'm sort of journaling these days you know day by day okay you know massive sell-off here massive sell-off here lots of dark pool here lots of dark pool there um and it's interesting, right? Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, look at SPY, right? It's clear as day as we kind of, you know, get to the spot. This is obviously your call wall, you know, massive zero day call selling. And then just boom, you know, some big dark pool coming out up here as well too. Getting a really aggressive sell, really aggressive sell. And then obviously, you know, we're here now, but it's it's interesting, right? So somebody's obviously doing these orders. I just don't know if it's market makers or institutions. So, all right, guys, that'll do it for the video today. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Be ready for NFP. It's probably just going to be some massive fuckery. I think Biden's also going to come out with some like state of the union address shit tonight. So I, I bet futures are probably about to go pretty ballistic or something here uh, in the after hours. But all right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.